Welcome to week five of our first grade elementary reading video. My name is Mrs. Willenberg and I am a first grade teacher at Sammy Hill Primary School. Before we get started, if you're having trouble hearing or understanding me today, I have four tips and tricks that you could use to try and fix that problem. The first one is to turn on closed captions if you have that available. Number two, adjust the playback speed to slow down the video. Three, consider watching shorter clips than pausing, listening, and watching it again. And the last tip, ask someone in your home if they're available to watch the video with you. Stop frequently and talk to them about what you heard and understood. Let's take a look at what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to start with a review. We're gonna review our care long O vowel patterns. We have three that we're gonna to review today. We also have some high frequency words that we're going to review. Then we're gonna learn how to be a sleuth or a detective, how to pull out clues and details in our story. The story that we're gonna read is titled Face to Face. In our story Face to Face, we're gonna talk about treasures that we can find in our country. Then we're gonna use what we read and talked about to write our opinion. Last, we have a challenge. Let's go ahead and get started. I have three vowel patterns that we are going to be reviewing today. We're reviewing these patterns and they're going to help us with our I can read passage. You can find the I can read passage in your packet. If you do not have a packet, you will see the I can read passage here on the screen in a little bit. All of these vowel patterns are used to spell the long O sound, O in words. They have some different generalizations or rules of when to use them. We're gonna review all of those today. The first pattern that you see is OA. The vowel team OA is used to spell the long O sound, O. Our key word to help us remember OA is boat. Where do you hear the O sound in the word boat? Let's stretch it out, b o t. I hear it in the middle of the word. I hear the O sound. Most of the time, when we hear the O sound in the middle of the word, it is spelt with the O A, but it can sometimes be used to spell the O sound when we hear it at the beginning of the word as well. Our next pattern we see is O W. The vowel team O W is also used to spell the O sound O. Our keyword to help us remember O-W is snow. Where do you hear the O sound in snow? Let's stretch it out. Snow. I hear the O sound at the end of the word snow. Most of the time, when you hear the O sound at the end of a word, it's spelt with the O-W. But it can sometimes be used to spell the O sound when we hear it at the beginning or in the middle of a word. The last pattern that we're going to review today is consonant O. The letter O can also be used to spell the long O sound, O, when it follows a consonant. Our key word to help us remember consonant O is no. You can hear the long O sound at the end of the word no. Let's stretch it out, no. You hear that O sound at the end of the word no. When the spelling consonant O is at the end of a syllable or word, it usually stands for the sound O. This is called an open syllable. These are three different pictures and words that help you remember these different vowel teams. I have a few other pictures and sentences that can help you remember these different vowel teams and what, they, what you hear when you say them. The first one we have is OA. Remember, our keyword to help us remember OA is boat. You can see a picture of a boat on your screen. The boat is floating on the water. I hear the long O sound in the middle of the word float as well. I'm gonna go through and say the letters names, sounds, and the sentence, and then I'm gonna make a little motion to help me remember. I want you to watch me first and then you can try it with me. O A O, O A O. The boat can float. So I made a little boat with my hands and it's floating on the water. Let's go ahead and let's try it together. O A O, O A O. The boat 
can float. Great job. Let's try another one. Our next vowel team is OW. Remember, our keyword to help us remember OW is snow. You hear that O sound at the end of the word. You can also see that there is a picture of some snow. In the snow, you see a bird. That type of bird is called a crow. In the word crow, you also hear that long O sound at the end of the word, like in the word snow. I want you to listen as I say the letters names, sounds, and the sentence, and then you can try it with me. O-W-O, O-W-O. The crow is in the snow. So I just made my hands into some wings and made some snowflakes. Can you try it with me? O-W-O, O-W-O. The crow is in the snow. We have one more vowel team we're gonna look at. We have consonant O. Remember, consonant O, our keyword is no. In this picture, you see a dog and he's sitting down. He is not going to go anywhere. In the word go, I also hear the long O sound, O, at the end of the word, just like in the word no. I see that O sound is spelled with a single letter O. Go is another word that follows that consonant O pattern. I want you to listen as I do the chant first. Consonant O, O. Consonant O, O. Oh no, he won't go. I'm trying to pull the dog, but he's not going anywhere. Can you try it with me? Consonant O, O. Consonant O, O. Oh no, he won't go. I really like making motions to go with all of these chants. You can try and make some on your own. So now that we've reviewed these three different vowel teams and we've gone through some motions to help us remember, we're gonna read some words. If you take a look right here, I have three columns of words. At the top of each column, there's a picture that goes with our key word, boat, snow, and no. And this first column right here, we have boat. Remember, boat is our key word to help us remember O-A. The O-A spells the O sound. If we take a look at this first word right here, I see that there is an O-A. I'm gonna highlight that O-A. So that way it reminds me I need to make the O sound when I see those letters. Now I can go back and make all of the sounds. Try it with me. L O D, load. That word is load. If you take a look at the next word, what should we highlight? O A, yes. O A tells us that we need to say O. Oh. Let's go back and make the sounds. K O T, coat. Take a look at the next one. It's a little bit longer, but we're going to break it apart together. What vowel team do you see? That's right, O-A. That tells us that we need to say O. Is there anything else that we need to say that is important in this word? Hmm, T-H. That T-H is going to tell us to say We're gonna underline that T-H. Let's go back and make the sounds together. R-O-T, throat. That word is throat. This is your throat. Last word. We need to highlight the vowel team, O-A. Let's go back and make the sounds. S-O-P, soap. That word is soap. If we take a look in this next column, we see a picture of snow. I remember snow is our key word for O-W. O-W spells the O sound. Let's take a look at the first word. We're gonna highlight that O-W to remind us when we see that, we need to say O. Let's go through and make the sounds. L-O, low. Take a look at the next one. What should we highlight? O-W, let's go through and make the sounds. R-O, row, that word is row. Take a look at the next one. What vowel team do you see? O-W, 
Let's make the sounds. K, r, o, crow. And then the last word in this column, I see O, W as well. Is there anything else in this word you might, that we might need to point out? S H. S H is important. It's telling us to say shh. So let's go back and make the sounds. Shh. O. Oh, show. That word is show. In our last column, we see the picture for our keyword no, the consonant O oh, that's telling us to say O. Oh. So in that first word, we're going to highlight the O. Oh. That tells us we need to make the long O oh sound. Let's go through and make the sounds. N. O. Oh. No. What about the next one? What should we highlight? The O. Oh. Good. Let's go through and make the sounds. G. O. Oh. Go. Last word. What are we going to highlight in this word? O. Oh. And it's telling us to make the long O sound, like an O. Let's make the sounds. S. O. Oh. So. Friends, if you're able, able to pause the screen right here, I would encourage you to do that. That way you can go back and reread all of the words that we decoded. It's always a good idea to reread our decoding list so that we become more fluent readers. Now we're gonna take a look at some high frequency words that we're gonna see in our passage. We're gonna read through these words together. I want you to listen to me first as I read them and talk a little bit about them. Then we can go back and read them together. This first word is found. In the word found, the O-U is spelling the ow sound. There's another word on this high frequency list where the O-U is also spelling the ow sound. This next word is once. In the word once, you see a C followed by an E. If you can think back, when a C is followed by an E, I, or Y, it makes the S sound. So in the word once, the C, E is saying S. This next word is wild. In the word wild, the I is making the I sound. We will learn here later on that when I is fo followed by an L, D, it's going to say I. The next word we have is mouth. In the word mouth, that O-U is spelled and telling us to say ow, just like in the word found, mouth. The next word we have is took. That O-O is spelling, telling us to say uh, uh, took. Let's go through and say these words together. Found, once, wild, mouth took. If you can pause the screen right now, I would encourage you to do that and write down these words so you can practice them later. Now that we've reviewed our three long O vowel teams and our high frequency words, I think we're ready to read our I can read passage. Some of you might have read or seen this before, but that's okay. Remember, good readers go back and reread. In this passage, the high frequency words are already highlighted. We're gonna go through and we're gonna read this together. Let's start. Once last spring, we found a wild toad squatting under the low branch of an oak tree. It had stripes on its back, a pale throat and strong back legs. A funny croak came from its wide mouth. We were thrilled we picked up the toad to show mom. When mom spotted the toad, she screamed, scram toad. Let's split, I said, and we took the toad back to the oak tree. That's a fun passage. If you have the passage in your packet, I would encourage you to take a pencil or a highlighter or a marker or a crayon and go back and find those long O vowel teams that we practiced reading together. Remember, those were O, A, O, W, and consonant O. Those spellings told us to make the O sound. See how many words you can find in this passage.
now that we've reviewed our high frequency words, read our passage and um, reviewed our vowel teams, we're gonna talk about our essential question this unit. What do we treasure? When you hear the word treasure, you might think of silver or gold or money. But when we're talking about treasures in reading, I want you all to think about something a little bit different. Think about things like memories or pictures or surprises or stories or even places. If you think back to last week, we talked about how a story can be a treasure. You might remember reading the story Cinderella in your classroom and how that story could be a treasure. This week, we're focusing on what treasures can we find in our country. This story down here on the right bottom might look familiar. A trip to Washington, D.C. You might have read that in your classroom. When we read this story, we talked about important places that you could visit in Washington, D.C. The places, the buildings, monuments that we read about can all be considered treasures. As we're reading today, I want you to continue thinking about what other treasures you can find in our country. I have a challenge for you. This page might look familiar to you, but that's okay. Today, we're going to be sleuths. A sleuth is like a detective. A detective might use a dog called a bloodhound. Bloodhounds help look for clues. They sniff out clues and find details to help them solve mysteries. So we're gonna put the word sleuth and hound together and you all can be sleuth hounds. That's a made up word. So we have a mystery from the super sleuths. We're gonna go ahead and read this letter and find out what we need to do. Dear junior sleuth hound, mysteries are all around. There could be a mystery on your playground. There could be a mystery in a faraway land. There could be mysteries between the pages of this book. So what do you do when you solve a mystery? What do you do to solve a mystery? Become a sleuth hound. Look for clues, ask questions, then put all the pieces together and prove your answers. This book gives you a chance to practice skills that sleuths use. As you read this book, use the super sleuth steps to find answers to some really big questions. Good luck. This sure sounds like fun. I can't wait to look for clues, ask questions in order to make our case and prove our point to share with others. Let's take a look at the four super sleuth steps. The first one is to look for clues. When we're reading our story, we need to make sure we pull out details, not just in the text, but also in the pictures. The pictures can give us, or photographs can give us other details to help us understand. The next one is to ask questions. Part of being a good reader is to ask questions. When you ask questions, you might uncover some new details. Then you need to make your case. You take a look at all the details and evidence that you pulled out from the story and summarize it. You use what you learned to tell what you think. Last, prove it. You show what you learned through the details and share that information with others. We're gonna use these four steps as we're reading, talking, and writing about our story today. As we're reading our story today, we need to remember our essential question and our question for the week, which was, what treasures can we find in our country? The title of our story is Face to Face. This story is nonfiction, which means that it's giving us real information and facts, it's teaching us something. We're gonna read this story together. And we're going to break it apart into the paragraphs. This will help us to follow our super sleuth steps and understand the text. As we're reading the first paragraph, be thinking about what this text is going to be teaching us and what treasures we can find in our country. Let's read the first paragraph together. Our nation has had many great presidents. In South Dakota, you can come face to face with presidents. Four of them are carved in stone. What are we gonna be learning about as we read this story? That's right, we're gonna be learning about four of our great presidents that we can see on this page that are carved in stone. If you look at this map that's in blue, it's a map of the United States. You can see that there is a red star. The star is not telling us that's where the capital is. 
No, it's telling us where we can find the state of South Dakota, where we can find these presidents carved in stone. Let's keep reading. In our next paragraph, I want you to be reading to find out how the stone was created and what presidents are on it. So that's our focus as we're reading. You're trying to find out how they made it and what presidents we can find. Mount Rushmore is in the Black Hills area. An artist made a small model of four presidents. In 1927, workers began carving the mountain. First, they blasted away stone. With tools, they carved faces. By 1941, four huge faces were carved. First was George Washington, next was Thomas Jefferson, then came Abraham Lincoln and Theodore Roosevelt. Each face is almost six stories tall. That paragraph gave us a lot of information. If you want to pause the screen right, he right here, if you're able to, to go back, back and reread and make sure you understood, I would do that now. So in this paragraph, I ask you to read to find out how it was created, as well as what presidents you can find. Let's discuss the first question. How was it created? That's right. I'm going to underline where you can find that in the text. First, they blasted away stone. And then it says, with tools, they carved faces. So that's where you can find the evidence in this text to answer the question. The next thing I said is, what presidents can you find on the stone? Were you able to pull out the four presidents? I'm going to go back and underline where you can find them. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Theodore Roosevelt. Take a look at the picture to the right. You can see all four presidents' faces that are carved in stone. Let's read our last paragraph. As you're reading the last paragraph, I want you to be reading to find out why those presidents were chosen. What makes them important? Let's go ahead and read and find out. Mount Rushmore reminds us of our country's first 150 years. Washington and Lincoln kept America together. Jefferson helped Americans learn about the West. Roosevelt created the national parks. Visitors to Mount Rushmore see great stone carvings. They enjoy nature's beauty too. It is a national treasure. Just like our question, it's talking about treasures. So all throughout the story, I asked you to think about what treasures we can find in our country. Now, this stone carving called Mount Rushmore, we can find in South Dakota, which is in our country. Do you think it's a treasure? We could add that to our concept map. As you were reading that last paragraph, I asked you to think about why those presidents were chosen to be on the stone. What made them important? Were you able to pull out the information from the text? I'm going to go back and underline where you can find it. The first one says Washington and Lincoln, that's two of the presidents, it said that they kept America together. It's very important. The next one says Jefferson helped Americans learn about the West. And last, Roosevelt created the national parks. That's pretty cool. All very important information and tells us why those four presidents were chosen. Let's take a look at the be a sleuth portion at the bottom of our page. The first one we're going to look at is look for clues. How did planners choose the four presidents for Mount Rushmore? Hmm. Think about what we just talked about in our third paragraph. Why were those four presidents important? Why did they choose them? You could turn and talk to someone at your home, or if you want to write down your answer, or you could just maybe whisper to a stuffed animal. The next one is ask questions. If you went to Mount Rushmore, what would you ask about the mountain? I'm sorry. What would you ask about how the mountain was carved? Think about that second paragraph. I underlined two different things that they had to do to start building it. 
or start creating it. Said that they had to blast away stone and then they used tools to carve the faces. Maybe you have other questions like what tools did they use? You could write those questions down now and maybe you could research it. The last one is make your case. Make your case says, do you think it is important for all Americans to visit Mount Rushmore? Why or why not? Now we're gonna use this in our writing portion. So when we write our opinion piece today, you are going to answer that question. Do you think it's important for Americans, for all Americans to visit Mount Rushmore? Why or why not? Now, when we're thinking about opinion writing, you need to think about Oreo. Now, not the cookie, but how we organize our writing, the four key features. O, give your opinion, R, reason, E, explanation, O, state your opinion again. So first you need to figure out what your opinion is. Do you think it's important for all Americans to visit Mount Rushmore? Maybe think about the different things that we underlined when we were reading our story. Maybe you could go back and reread it now. Do you think it's important for all Americans to visit Mount Rushmore? After you have your opinion, you need to tell me a reason. So give me one sentence telling me a reason to support your opinion. After you give a reason, you have to give an explanation. So you're gonna use the evidence from the text that underline parts that we found that support your opinion of that it is important or it isn't important. And then last, you're gonna wrap up by restating your opinion. If you wanna pause right now to go ahead and write your opinion writing or go back and reread, that would be a good idea. Let's review what we did today. We worked pretty hard. So we started out with our care review. We reviewed long O vowel patterns. We talked about O, A, O, W, and consonant O. All of those spell the O sound. We also talked about some high frequency words and read a I can read passage. If you have that passage, I would encourage you to read it again. Then we learned how to be a sleuth, how to pull out those details in our story face to face. We pulled out really important information that you can use in your opinion writing. We talked about what treasures we can find in our country. Last, I have a challenge for you. In social studies, you might have talked about state symbols. State symbols could be considered treasures. So we've been talking about treasures we can find in our country. I would encourage you to think about treasures you can find in the state of Tennessee, like our state symbols. Or what treasures can we find here in Knoxville or even in your neighborhood? I hope you have fun with that. I enjoyed learning with you all today and I hope to see you soon.